Hey everyone. So today we're going to do an interesting problem with stacks where we're going to try and sort a stack using only up to one other stack as a place to store our data. So let's go ahead and dive right into the problem. We probably first want to ask a couple questions. So for example, what type of elements are in the stack? Is this a stack of integers? Is it a stack of strings? Is it a stack of floats? Is it a stack of some other type of object? And we want to just double check that we know how we're actually going to compare these two objects. Because obviously if it's a stack of integers, that's really easy. But if we have a stack of you know, some arbitrary object type, then maybe it's not clear how we're going to sort. So in this case, I'm just going to do a stack of integers because that's going to be the easiest, but it's a good thing to ask. We also might want to ask how we're sorting this. So you could either sort it greatest to smallest or smallest to greatest. And in addition to that, what does that really mean in the context of a stack? In a stack, are the smallest items the ones at the top of the stack, so the ones that are gonna get popped off first, or are the smallest items the ones at the bottom of the stack, so they're gonna get popped off last? And it doesn't really affect how, like it's not gonna affect our solution to the problem, but it's another thing that's really good to just double check with your interviewer and make sure that they understand that you're thinking about these details in the problem. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort it by the smallest item is going to be at the top of the stack. And so it would be like one, two, three, four, five going down. And then you would pop off one first, then two, then three, then four, then five, because I think that makes the most sense for like how you would use the stack, but you can do it however you prefer. And finally, we're going to, I want to confirm what exactly are the allowable is what exactly is the allowable extra memory that we can use. So we know that we're allowed to use at, up to one additional stack, but can we have temp like what can we have in the way of temporary variables, other things might be good to check. In this case, it's basically we can use a, a single stack, but we can use a single additional stack and we can use a constant number of, you know, temporary variables or different things like that. So that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and discuss how we might actually solve this question. Uh, one thing that, you know, the maybe obvious solution, but we just ruled it out by saying that you can have a constant amount of extra space would be to just copy everything to an array, sort it and put it back in the stack, right? So we can't do something like that. We need to think of something a little bit more clever. And what I'm thinking is that we're going to have two stacks and I'm going to go ahead and copy in this example that I have of to of our stack. So let's say that this is going to be our main stack here and then we have our additional stack. And we know that by the fact that they told us that we can use an additional stack, that should tell us right off the bat that we're probably going to be wanting to transfer elements between the two stacks. And that may give us a clue into how we should think about solving this. So what I think I want to do when I do this is I'm going to copy the elements over to this secondary stack one at a time, and I'm going to try and do that copy in order. So whenever I add an element, I'm going to figure out where is the appropriate place to add that element into the secondary stack, and I'm going to add it into that appropriate place so that by the time I've transferred all of the elements over, it's already going to be completely sorted. So let's look at how we can do this potentially. So I'm going to need some sort of temporary variable that's going to store my elements that I pop off. And I'm going to do something like this. So first I'm going to pop off the top element. That should be fairly obvious. And I'm going to set that to be my temp variable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this stack and I'm going to look if there are any elements in the stack, then I need to put it where it belongs in the stack. And so we know a couple things about this stack. We're going to guarantee that this stack is always in sorted order. So what that means is that if one, so if our value is ever greater than the top value in this stack, then we need to put it somewhere down in the stack. And if it's ever less than the top value in the stack, then we know that that is the position that we should be putting it into the existing stack. So let's look at how this works. So first of all, we're going to, with our one, there's nothing in this stack. So we don't really need to worry. We're just going to put it at the top of the stack because it's going to be the first element. 
But now we're going to pop off our next value, which is this three here. And so three is greater than one. And that means that we need to put it below the one. But to put it below the one, we need to pop off the one and put it somewhere else. So where better to put the one than back on this original stack? So we can pop off the one and put the three here like this. And then all we have to do to restore the stack to where it was before is we just pop this one off here and put it back on here. And we know that this is always going to maintain by popping it off one stack and onto the and pushing it onto the other and then popping it back and pushing it onto the original stack. So by popping off here, putting it on here and then popping back off here and putting it back onto the temporary stack that we're going to maintain the same order of the elements. So by doing this, we're not actually unsorting anything. And we can see this if we continue further a little bit, we're gonna go ahead to the next element. We pop off the two and two is gonna be our temp variable. And now two again is greater than one. So we're gonna pop off one and put it here, but two is less than three. So we know now we found the right spot for it. So we're gonna put the two there and then we're gonna pop off the one and put the one here. And as you can see, we've maintained the order and we'll continue to do this one more time. We'll pop off the four and put it to our temp variable. And now four is greater than one. So we're gonna pop off the one and put it here. Four is greater than two, so we pop off the two. And four is greater than three, so we pop off the three and put it here. And now what we do is we have our we have now have an empty stack, so there's nothing that's greater than the four. So we just put the four on, and now all we have to do is reverse it. So we pop off the three and put it here, and we pop off the two and put it here, and we pop off the one and we put it here. And now, just by doing that, our stack is in sorted order. So this is some sort of basic search that we're doing where we're just adding elements one at a time and or basic sort sorry and we're just adding elements one at a time to our results and we're each time we're comparing and we're putting it in the right location so it's basically like an insertion sort sort of and hopefully that makes sense and let's go ahead and actually implement this so now this is a good example of a problem where the actual logic of how to do it is gonna be much more complicated than the implementation. So it's good to, you can draw out these diagrams on the board, on the whiteboard, or even type them out if you're doing a, like a phone interview where you're typing into a collab edit or something like that. So by doing this, it'll help you to visualize it. And now we also have this reference that we can use when we're writing our code and it's going to help us a lot to make sure that we're writing the code and dealing with all the cases that we need to deal with. So I'm going to write this. It's going to take in a stack. It's going to take in a stack of integers and it's going to return a stack of integers. So integer, and I'm just going to call it sort stack, and it's going to take in a stack of integers called stack. So the first thing we need to do, obviously, is make sure that the stack is not null and that the stack is not empty because if it's non-null or empty, those are both trivial cases. And in both of those cases, we can just return the original stack because it's either null, which you know doesn't really is neither here nor there, or it's an empty stack, and the empty stack is always sorted. So we'll say if stack equals null or stack dot is empty, then return stack. And make sure here. I've mentioned this before, but make sure you call stack equals null. You test stack equals null before you call stack is empty, because if this, if you do these in the reverse order, then in the case that the stack is null, you're going to crash, because this case is going to be called first, and you can't call is empty on a null object. So just a minor detail to keep in mind. And now we need to create our secondary stack. So I'm just going to call that new stack. I'm going to say stack integer new stack equals new stack integer like this and so what we want to do is first obviously the like the first step that we want to do let's go back and revert this to what we had before so we had four we had two we had three and we had one like this 
And so the first thing that we did was just, we're always going to copy the first element to our temp stack, right? So, or our new stack. So we're always going to just copy one there because the first element is always going to be in sorted order. So we might as well just go ahead and do that. So we can say new stack dot push stack dot pop. Right, because we're popping off the top element and we are and we know that this stack is not empty so there's at least one element so we're going to so now we are in this state here and once we do that we're basically going to do two things we're going to first go through all we're going to say while our original stack is not empty we have to keep going right because as long as this stack has elements in it there are elements that haven't gotten added to our new stack so our outer loop is going to be while not stack dot is empty so that we ensure that we go through all of the elements in the stack and then within that we're going to do a couple things so first we can pop off this element and set it to be the temp variable so we'll create our int temp and we're going to say that's equal to stack dot pop and again the stack is not empty right so that should be totally fine and then we're going to say first we want to make sure that we're adding this temp variable to the right position so we're going to go into here and we're going to say as long as this element is less than our temp variable then we're going to pop it off and pop it onto the other stack and then once because we always know that the smallest element is going to be at the top right so we're going to pop off we're going to keep popping off until the top of this temp stack or the new stack is greater than our temp variable and then we're going to push on the temp variable so we can do another while loop here and we're going to say well new stack and also the other thing is that if the stack is then empty that means it was the greatest value so we're going to push it onto the bottom of the stack so while new stack dot is while new stack is not empty and temp is greater than new stack dot peak then as long as this is the case we're going to pop off the element and put it on to our original stack right so we're going to say stack dot push new stack dot pop like that and then so we're going to push so we've now pushed this one onto here like this and then we're going to once that is done we need to push the our temp variable onto this stack so we're going to just say that now that we've removed all the items that are smaller than our temp variable we're just going to say new stack dot push temp and so here what we talked about in the original algorithm was that we are then going to push all the additional items back onto the stack. So we copy, the, push this one back onto here. But this is not actually necessary for us to do explicitly because of the way that we laid this out. So if you look here, we're going to do while temp is greater than new stack dot peak. Otherwise, we're just going to skip over this and come right down to here. So we know that since our all our va values that we popped onto our original stack are smaller than this value that we just pushed on we're going to go through here this while loop because we're going through all of the items in the original stack and we're going to pop off and push on to the new stack any of the ones that we just pushed on to the old stack because they're all going to be smaller than the one before because they're still in order so it doesn't really matter and it's not actually going to affect the efficiency of our code at all by just letting this run automatically so finally we just need to return new stack and that's really all there is to this problem so let's go ahead and test this and i'm going to do a shorter example here i'm going to do just one three two like this just so it'll be slightly quicker so we're going to come down here we have our two stacks and temp is going to be not set yet so we're going to say new stack dot push stack dot pop so we're going to go ahead and push on this one and then we're going to say come down here and we're going to say while stack is not empty and it's not empty temp is equal to stack dot pop so we're going to remove this 
and set it to equal to temp. And then while new stack is not empty and temp is greater than new stack.peak. And so new stack.peak obviously shows us the top element without removing it. So this is three is greater than one. So we're going to say stack.push new stack.pop. So we're going to pop this off here and we're going to push it on here. And then now the stack, so new stack is empty. So we're going to come down and we're going to push temp onto new stack. So we're going to push three onto there and then we're going to come back again. So we're going to say stack is not empty. Temp equals stack.pop, which is one. So here like that, then temp is not greater than new stack.peak because new stack.peak is three and temp is one. So we're going to just skip over this and come down to here and push temp. And we're going to end up with it like this. And finally, we are going to do this one more time or a couple more times. So we're going to come back to here. The stack is not empty. We're going to pop the two off here and put it here. Then temp is greater than new stack.peak. So we're going to pop this off and push it onto the other stack. So we're going to put this here like that. And then now temp is not greater. So we're going to come down here and push temp onto new stack. So we're going to put two there. And finally, we our stack is still not empty. So we come back one more time. We remove the one, set it to temp. It's not greater than new stack.peak. So we just put come down here and push it on to our original stack. And then we come back here and stack is empty. So we come down and we return our new stack, which is what we expect it to be. So hopefully that all made sense. That's a fun little problem. Uh, good extra exercise to think about is what's going to be the runtime of this. It's probably going to be something similar to insertion sort. So just maybe think about that on your own time. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, leave them down below or on the blog and I will see you again soon.